Welcome. Yeah, so problem 15 and definitely my favorite of the 2017 bunch. It's really cool. So I1 here is this integral and I2 is this integral where the integrand is appearing like a continued fraction and we proceed in this manner. And so the task is to show that the limit is n goes to infinity of I sub n is equal to this here. Yeah, this number here. Okay, so let's get started by first looking at just the integrands. So I1 integrand is going to look like this. And I've written um, root x as um, x to the power 1 half. But otherwise, I have 1 over 1 plus root x here, which is the integrand of I1, right? Now, I2 integrand uh, is going to be this, right? And that's what you see here, right? OK, cool, cool, cool. I guess like I'm writing I2 here, even though I2 is an integral. And here I'm only showing the associated integrand. So like, you know, um, yeah, I could have used a different letter than these guys so that you guys don't confuse them with these guys because these guys are integrals. These guys are just the integrands. But just keep that in mind. OK, now to move forward, we're going to simplify uh, this here. And the way we simplify is we're going to write this one as one uh, plus uh, root x divided by 1 plus root x. Keep in mind that we said root x is x to the 1 half. So we write 1 plus x to the 1 half divided by 1 plus x to the 1 half, which certainly is 1, right? Okay, now uh, these denominators are the same. And uh, so in the numerators, we can combine 1 and 1 to 2. And then so we're going to get 1, this one, divided by 2 plus root x divided by 1 plus root x, right? So that's um, this this here. But then uh, we could write this uh, more succinctly as 1 plus root x divided by 2 plus root x, right? Okay, so on to I3. I3 goes like this. Now, notice that the um, uh, part I circled in red in I3 is I2. So I3 is 1 over 1 plus I2, yeah? Okay, so... Uh, we make use of the good work we did with I2 simplifying it like that. And we're going to replace this here with this here because that's what I2 is. Yeah. All right. So uh, we do that. And um, when we do, we get this. And then just like the work we did over here, getting common denominators and simplifying and so on, we're going to uh, get common denominators and simplify um, I3. And um, yeah, so these details should not be surprising. Yeah. OK. Now. Um, we're going to get this and um, that, right? We're going to get that, okay? But this is the same as writing this here, right? Okay, cool. All right, now, for I4, we actually don't have to do any more. We could just, like, figure it out. And here's what I4 is going to be. It's going to have 3 plus uh, 2 root x in the numerator, and in the denominator, it's going to have 5 plus 3 root x. Do you see how I figured that out? Yeah? Well, if you look at uh, the patterns uh, before, then you should be able to figure it out. But here's what's going on. If we let this guy be A0 and its denominator be A1, then first, this is A1, and this is going to be, well, naturally, A2. Then this is A2, and this is going to be, um, the denominator is going to be A3. So I4 uh, is going to be, a3 divided by A4. And A4, again, is going to be 5 plus 3 root x. And the way I figure that out is because I noticed that A0 plus A1 is equal to A2. And in general, um, An minus 2 plus An minus 1 is equal to An. But wait, does that look familiar, that recursive definition? It's the Fibonacci sequence. Yeah? OK. So um, remember, the Fibonacci sequence goes like this. And I have videos on the Fibonacci sequence, including uh, showing, you know, um, the closed form, the formula for uh, the nth Fibonacci number. And I'll link those videos below this. But yeah, um, you can check those out. And I have many videos on solving recurrence relations in discrete math also. So yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, this here, whether we use A's or F's for a Fibo, is the Fibonacci sequence. This here is identical to the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, recall that um, the limit is n goes to infinity of uh, the nth term divided by the uh, n, min n minus first term, uh, like that, of the Fibonacci sequence is equal to phi, the golden ratio. Uh, and since here, our a sub n's define the Fibonacci sequence, whether we write them with a sub n's or f sub n's, 
uh, we see that the limit is n goes to infinity of the nth term divided by the term before it uh, is going to be phi, the golden ratio, which is 1 plus root 5 over 2. Yeah? Okay. So, um, how is this useful to us? Well, our integrals are exactly defined in this way. And again, reminder, phi, the golden ratio, is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. Yeah? Okay, okay. Now, so I sub n can be generically defined as, well, if I1 is uh, A0 over A1 and I2 is A1 over A2, it should be clear that I sub n is equal to A sub n minus 1 divided by A sub n, right? And notice that that's the reciprocal of this uh, quotient right there, right? So I sub n is going to be, um, um, well, now, like, actually not just looking at the integrand, but the integral I sub n is going to be the integral from uh, 0 to 1 of A sub n minus 1 divided by A sub n and then dx, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, what we need is limit as n goes to infinity of um, the integral I sub n, right? Okay, so that means that we write lim as n goes to infinity in front of this, which means we write lim as n goes to infinity in front of this. Ah, early planning. That's why I have a little bit of space in there. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. Okay, okay. Um, so, so, um, you do that, and then you do that. Okay, yeah. But then uh, we could put this uh, limit inside of the integral. And so if we do that, then we uh, could write um, scoot. So not <laughs> that well planned after all right now. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so um, this limit is going to be what? Well, if the limit is n goes to infinity of a sub n over a sub n minus 1 is phi, then the limit of this reciprocal should be 1 over phi. So this limit should be 1 over phi, 1 over the golden ratio, right? So this is what we've got. Uh, that there, right, is 1 over phi. Okay, second try. I'm writing a better phi. Okay, and then dx. And since phi is a constant, 1 over phi is a constant. And so the integral of um, a constant dx is just the constant times x. And that evaluated from 0 to 1 is going to be, well, plug in 1 and then plug in 0. Take the difference. So that's going to be 1 over phi. But 1 over phi is what? Well, let's make space and see. 1 over phi is going to be 1 over, since we said phi is this here, 1 plus root 5 over 2. 1 over phi is going to be 1 over uh, 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is 2 over 1 plus root 5. And then if we rationalize this denominator here, uh, which means we multiply numerator and denominator by 1 minus root 5, then we'd get this first, right? And so in the numerator, we get uh, 2 times 1 minus root 5. And in the denominator, we get um, difference is squares, so 1 squared minus root 5 squared, which is 1 minus 5, which is negative 4, right? And then, and then, this 2 and this negative 4 can cancel so that we have uh, just a negative 2 in the denominator and no longer a 2 there. And then if we uh, multiply by negative 1 top and bottom, we're going to get root 5 minus 1 over 2 as desired, yeah? Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this and um, keep watching. Take care.